Hey guys, I've been testing out Zoom's new high fidelity audio mode in my lessons, and I wanted to share some of my first impressions with you all. Also, considering these changes and the fact that Zoom supports stereo inputs, I wanted to demonstrate the difference between a mono mic setup and a stereo mic setup, which I believe you all will find very interesting. High fidelity audio mode is a feature that has been recently added to Zoom that basically lets you disable all of the background audio enhancements, and it also allows for a higher quality data compression. So when you're using this mode, it's really important that you and your student are using headphones because basically you can hear everything on both sides of the call. But the trade-off is very much worth it because there's so much more detail and there's so much more, there's so much more detail, especially in the area of sustained sound. Like if I hold a chord out on the, pet, on, the, uh, on the piano, normally Skype or Zoom will just cut that note off, all of the sustained notes like really quickly. But with this new high fidelity music mode, and if both people are wearing headphones, you'll pretty much hear the sound as long as it goes on. And you will generally get a more natural flowing conversation as well. Now I normally use Skype, and I have to admit that this update, along with some issues that I've been having with Skype, has me interested in switching my entire studio over to Zoom. And I'm pretty much in that process now. I really don't see Skype coming out with a feature this specific dedicated to music lessons anytime soon. Now, if you're wondering how Skype and Zoom compare audio-wise, well, Skype accepts one mono input and does not allow you to disable the audio processing. Zoom accepts more than one input and allows you to transmit in stereo, and it's a significantly higher bit rate. So pretty much, well, it's a significantly higher bit rate, but also the audio enhancements are all disabled. To put it mildly, Zoom pretty much destroys Skype in terms of audio fidelity, especially if you're using more than one mic and you have a good internet connection. Now, I should mention that you've been able to run a multi-mic setup in Zoom for a while now, but these new features along with a stereo sound generally yields a much more impressive, much fuller sound, and it's, it's worth considering. It's worth the switch if you have the equipment for it. Now, if you're interested in enabling stereo for your account in Zoom, you'll need to be running Mac or Windows, and you'll need to enable the feature at the account level in your like Zoom portal. With that said, I wanted to demonstrate the difference between a mono mic setup and a stereo mic setup. Since Zoom supports stereo inputs, this conversation is now relevant. Here's what I intend to test. The first thing I wanna test is a mono microphone which is optimized for my voice. Then I'm going to test a mono mic setup that's optimized for the piano. Then a stereo mic setup optimized for the piano and a stereo mic setup optimized for the piano along with a mono mic setup optimized for my voice and both of them combined. The device that makes this all possible is the Zoom H8, which is a type of handy recorder, but I am using it in audio interface mode. Basically, I have three mics connected to it. Any of the Zoom devices work well for this, but I would recommend going with at least the H4 because of the quality of the preamps and also the XLR microphone inputs on the side. The Zoom H6 and the H8 support four inputs and six inputs respectively. And if you want to run like many mics, you'll wanna, you'll wanna go with the H6 or the H8. Also the H8 has a touch screen and it's got a lot of like ease of use features and so that's why I decided to go with it. For this test, you're definitely gonna wanna wear headphones so that you can tell the most difference between the mics and the mic layouts. Now the first mic I'm gonna be using is actually right here. This is a mono shotgun mic and this is what I've been using in Skype since Skype only accepts one input. I figure that my voice needs to be prioritized since the piano pretty much is equally loud anywhere in the room other than right behind the piano. And if I move the mic right behind the piano, you won't be able to hear my voice very well. So uh, that's why I went with a mic in this position. So to demonstrate this, I'm playing a little bit of Debussy's Arabesque. So that was the single shotgun mic, and you can hear just an example of how loud my voice is compared to the piano. Now I do have a limiter on this, which is limiting how loud the piano can get, but I don't really believe that is affecting the sound right now. So now I'm going to switch mics.
Okay, so now I am testing a mono setup optimized for the piano. And really, this is just for a point of comparison. This is just to show you if you only have one input and you stick your mic up to the back of the piano, here's what it's going to sound like for your voice compared to what the piano sounds like. Now here's those same two mics in stereo mode. For the final test, I wanted to demonstrate using the Zoom device a blend of the stereo mics to best capture the piano and a mono mic to best capture my voice, and they are both passed along in Zoom to the student, and this is the setup that I've opted to go with. So here is that test. So hopefully you all can tell the difference between like mono and stereo and whatnot. Really to capture the piano the right way, you really need to be recording in stereo. This is why pretty much every piano recording ever of any classical music is recorded in stereo or with more mics. But it's kind of unheard of to be doing this, you know, in a, in a live online lesson. But since it's possible, you might as well, if you're interested in setting the equipment up, it, it'll make a giant difference in terms of the nuance that you can convey and uh, you know, just the, the level of detail of the sound and the space and everything. Stereo is really just essential to get a good sound. Uh, this is particularly important for instructing students at a higher level, but I also find that it's helpful for inspiring students at a lower level as well. Now, students that are using iPads do not hear in stereo. They'll only hear in mono, even if they're using headphones. That might change in the future, but for now, that's the limitation that Zoom has placed on everything. Uh, it's still, you'll still hear all the mics mixed together, so it sounds still better than Skype, and it's broadcast in that new high fidelity music mode. So I think that generally Zoom's going to win on the audio, in the audio department. Now, this is the sound that I have been transmitting to students all week, and most of the students that are using PCs or Macs or whatever, and they're also using headphones, they've been blown away by the sound difference. And they're, they're definitely particularly excited for their lessons now, and I am... Uh, very happy to have made this upgrade. So I'll definitely keep you all tuned on, uh, or I'll keep you all updated on some of the things that I'm trying out with regards to these mics, like limiters and compression and things, just to get everything optimized perfectly, you know, for the best sound or the best balance of piano versus voice. And, you know, this is only relevant to piano, so other instruments probably need to have some other you know, considerations as well. But stereo, I think, benefits all instruments, so I think this is still worth mentioning. The last thing I wanted to mention is that this feature does not immediately change what the student's going to transmit. Now, if you're a teacher and you want your student to broadcast a better sound to you, you're going to have to work with them to get better, better um, like microphones and make sure the internet and everything's solid, and you'll have to have them enable these options as well. So this is really about what you broadcast to the student and not so much what the student broadcasts to you. Luckily, as the teacher, you could probably hear more with less than the student can, or at least this is my opinion. But if you can get the student broadcasting that very high quality sound, especially in stereo, then you could probably take them very far in terms of how nuanced your instruction can be, especially in the area of like phrasing and dynamics and balance between the hands. So I hope you all find this video helpful. On a side note, I do notice that the vast majority of the people that are watching my videos are not subscribers. So if y'all could please go ahead and subscribe 
and stay tuned to my videos, uh, I would greatly appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.